<laughs> hey YouTube. Um, it is time. I'm gonna keep the light on so you can see my pretty face. Hopefully you can't see this There's guy. It's not safe. Stop. We are here today for another YouTube tutorial. Oh man, the Newland. Uh, we're gonna call this the Steel Wool Photography Tutorial, and I'll explain why later because. <laughs> You know, it's kind of self-explanatory. But I'll teach you how to make pictures like this. And like that. And like this. And Chase here brought up a good point. No, let's not call you Chase, because that's your real name. Um, let's see, what's a good name for you? Man, that's a tough one. Uh, oh man, I'm drawing a blank. What do you want to call it? <laughs> zeros on it. It can have one zero or four zeros. It just needs to have the zeros. There's ones and twos and threes. Don't mess with that stuff. Um, so, basically, this is what it looks like. I think its main use is to scrub pots and pans and get stains off, but we're going to use it for something much more neato. Um, yeah. You'll need steel wool. You'll need a whisk. I got these at Bed Bath & Beyond. They were $3.99. The steel wool, these packages are like $4 a piece, and it comes with a bunch. I bought a whole bunch of them. All right. We'll do the big one, just because, you know, go big or go home. Yeah. All right. So, fluff out the steel wool. Um, and so, basically, steel wool is flammable. I'm going to show you how we're going to ignite it, because steel is very difficult to cut, and whenever they cut it in the factories, they have to keep the machines very cool, and they oil them a lot. And that oil is in this, and it's extremely flammable. So they oil it, and it just drips flames when you light it on fire. You want to make sure you have a fire extinguisher and plenty of water, just in case. It rained all day today. I prefer to only do this when it just rained. So, yeah. Um, got your whisk put the steel wool in there, and I fashioned this out of some parts I got from Lowe's. It is four foot of just, you know, wire, and I got these things to pinch it together. This is where you hold it. You want this that spins freely um, on the side you hold because you're going to be spinning it around. And on this end is where you attach this. Boom. Okay. And then you're going to hold it. I don't know if you can still see me, but you hold it and then just give it swings and stay as steady as you possibly can, and it will shoot sparks like some magical, you know, fiery demon of awesome photography. Okay, so I have Chase here. You don't necessarily have to have an assistant, but he was lonely, and I brought him along. All right, we're going to set the tripod up and set the camera up and give you some step-by-steps. Love you, bye. 
Hey, I forgot to tell you a couple things. One is you either need a lighter or a 9 volt battery. Yeah, whenever you touch this and rub it, the magic happens. It pretty much sets it on fire because of the terminals. Uh, anyway, there's um, yeah a lot of cool science that goes into that. But we'll rub this and it'll light on fire and it'll start dripping sparks. And yeah, you need a 9 volt battery. I forgot to tell you that. Do you need anything else? Um, yeah, you need dark clothing because you don't, I mean, you might want to show up in the picture, but if you don't want to show up in the picture, dark pants, long pants, dark long sleeves, and a hood because you're doing a long exposure, so it'll catch the light, but as long as you're dark and it can't see you, it won't catch you. I have gloves I might use if my hands show up. So yeah, there's that. Here we go. And I'm just going to go over how I set my camera up. So, first thing I did was set it up on the tripod. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can. Um, and set my autofocus to manual and set it to infinity. Can you see that right there, infinity? Yeah. Um, I am at... Here, you can get rid of the light for now. And then should be able to see this. Yeah, anyway, I'm at 30 seconds, ISO 100, f2.8. You want to put it on self-timer and set it to 10 seconds. Okay, here's a tip. The steel wool comes in little nice steel wool pillows that I'm sure are very comfortable for a tiny human thing. What you want to do, if you put them in there like this, they're not going to burn near as long. You want to fluff them out and get as much, much oxygen to all parts of it so that it can stay ablaze longer. Alright, so you fluff it out as much as you can, and then take your gizmo here and just start stuffing it in the whisk. Aha! And it should look like a trapped metal afro inside of a cooking utensil. Alright, so yeah. Battery. Whisk. Chase is going to turn the light off whenever I press the button for the picture, and I will just let you watch the magic unfold. Alright. Here we go. Press the button, and it will start blinking. Turn the light off, Chase. Rub the 9 bolt up against it. Look at that magic. So first we're going to do the tunnel and what I'm going to do here is I have my camera set up. I've changed it down to 15 seconds. It's still at f2.8 and 100 ISO. Um, so 15 second exposure right in the middle of the tracks and I will press it. It's on self timer 10 seconds. I'll press the button. As soon as I press the button I grab the battery, light it and then once I hear it click I start walking backwards. It's important that you walk backwards. If you walk forwards, then your legs will cut out a, you know, every time it crosses your legs, it'll be black, which might be cool. We'll try that too, but for right now, I'm just going to walk backwards so you get the full tunnel effect. And I put my hood on and I keep my head down so that my face doesn't show up and it's just the light. All right, so here we go. Chase is going to cut the light whenever the camera starts, and then you're just going to watch me walk backwards. And we are pushing the button and lighting rubbing the battery, and here we go, cut the light. Right now, we are going to do the ball of light, which you want to stand still and take baby steps to your left as you are swinging from one central location. I keep it near my face and swing it full circle and just take baby steps and do a full circle all the way around. This is how you do the orb of light. Go for it. Press the button. Alright. good.
Uh, when you're done, always check for fires. Isn't this cool? Look what we have left here. That's just like a warm, you know, I just want to, it's like a hot popsicle. It's amazing. Um, isn't that neat? And it just drips sparks everywhere. Probably going to set myself on fire, but I just think that's really cool. Anyway, so yeah, let's take a look at what this ball of light came out like in the camera. You can turn that light off, Chase. So yeah, here is our result, straight in the camera. I think that's pretty awesome, you know, kind of cool. I don't know how well this camera is focusing on it, but I will throw up a magical snapshot of it right here. Ta-da! Alright, so that's how you do the orb of light. Okay, so we just had a, you know, house, a house human that lives in the house over here, at the house that needs a human. He, uh, <laughs> he came out wondering what we're doing. That's probably going to happen unless you're in the desert, which would be a great place if you happen to live in the desert. Please keep this in the desert. And he was just curious about what we were doing. Gave him a little scare. Obviously, that's normal, but, you know, don't be a creeper and don't run away. Just say, hey, this is what we're doing. I tried to show him on my camera what we were doing, and my camera fell off of my tripod and made a loud bang hurt so deep and my lens may or may not be ruined. I doubt it's ruined but it's it's got a little scarring and we'll have to put a band-aid on it. Be safe. Seriously, fire extinguisher. It just rained so it's really wet here so we're kind of safe but make sure you take water, fire extinguisher, be prepared. I do not take any responsibility for you you know, setting the entire state of America ablaze. Not my fault. Your fault. Be safe and make awesome pictures and show them to me. Keep water with you at all times. We have a fire extinguisher in case we need it, but tons of bottles of water. It's cheap. It's a lot cheaper than paying for, you know, burning down houses and such. And please, please be safe and keep water with you. And do not leave until you have waited at least five minutes to make sure because something could settle and then something could blow on top of it. You want to stay around and wait at least five minutes before you leave any location and make sure you put out anything that looks suspicious. All right. Another reason you want to stay safe and watch what's happening around you. And I just wanted to give you another safety tip. Make sure you are aware of oncoming trains. They will sneak up on you and or try to jump out and grab you. Okay, be safe. Love you, bye. Um, we are, go ahead and turn that on. We're about to call it a night. We're gonna try some other stuff, but those are the two things that came out successfully. It's getting late, we have to work early in the morning. Um, so yeah, as you saw for the orb of light, that is infiltrating my eyeball. You wanna just make baby steps and take a, oh my gosh, I'm dying. <laughs> but after you get done, always stop and look all directions and make sure any embers are going out and put them out if they're not. Keep a bottle of water in your pocket and try not to catch an ember in your retina because it hurts. <laughs>